Okay, next piece of news. Um, new Xbox handhat or new Xboxes. Um, I stated this back in 2015 that Xbox would go the, the Sega multi-platform direction. Uh, and then around eight years or so later, they did it. So only a year after that video, uh, in 2016, I also said that they would also go the full Sega in the hardware space with an OEM licensed spectrum of Xbox machines. I said this. As I mentioned last year, we have now seen Microsoft very focused on converging into a single unified platform with PC, phone and console all running under the Windows 10 umbrella, agnostic of chipset or badge. With AMD the given partner in all of this, for the internals I can easily see Microsoft franchise with independent hardware manufacturers like MSI, Asus, Gigabyte, etc. and sell Xbox 2 or Xbox Pro, or whatever they call it, as a spectrum of products. And it appears to not only be a few months away from coming, also coming true, but of course I'm not a psychic, so... Many YouTubers and politicians and business advisors all preach that they are, or they're the new Messiah or Nostradamus. And as I always say, be aware, false prophets. A famous book said that, and I'm no such thing. But I have been around for a while in this space, and thus the old adage is as true now as ever, which is history does always repeat itself. And those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. So Microsoft has often lived kind of in their own Groundhog Day since they started in the late 70s, early 80s, in the kind of application space on the Apple Mac. Uh, and in that time, they have taken many a lesson from other companies, and much more besides, and they kind of continue to grow in that technology space. But it appears using the licensed IP method I discussed then has become their new route to ensure the gigantic cost of the acquisitions that they've done in terms of the remaining relevant in the entertainment business, the biggest business on this planet in terms of entertainment medium is recouped as fast as possible uh, and that's a big drive for all companies ROI is everything it's everything every decision can come down to follow the money but where better than the new buzz market of handheld PCs driven by an ever increasing drive to shrink hardware size power and cost to fit in the palm of your hand and that is really where a lot of companies are driving now because there's no more growth as I said before in terms of just getting more and more out of that same shrinking the die get more power on it and therefore get more performance that's dying that's why you're seeing all these kind of dlss pssr fsr solutions frame generation all that's going to continue so it's now working smarter not harder that's always going to be the problem but that doesn't mean that we can't get high powered machines into the palm of your hand in a very small package that is a growth area for hardware and that's probably where a lot of companies are spending their time it's certainly in the server space um, in terms of getting more and more into a single footprint to try and minimize your infrastructure costs and this is one thing that um, I do definitely see a growth area in, in terms of driving it. So the PC handheld area is kind of shrinking all that down to get more power in the hand. And again, a time that I worked through from the late 80s to early 2000s was that this was always the case. So Microsoft, they kind of chase the market. They've always chased the market. They're very slow to react and see the direction of travel the market's going in. So Steam, and specifically Steam OS in particular, was always their biggest threat here. And they kind of been blind to it, but Valve hasn't. And despite ex-Microsoft employee himself, Gabe Newell, failing multiple times to secure the, the link into the mainstream with the Steam Box and other attempts to get that in that true Trojan horse, was the Steam Deck that kind of achieved that. Even though I think the recent number says it's sold about three or four million, maybe five million since launch. People say that's a bad number. It's not because it's... It's a growth market for them. It's it's securing more people to buy from Steam. That's their point. The hardware is a route to market. So Steam Deck just improves their sales on Steam because people will buy more games that they wouldn't have bought on a PC, but they'll play on a handheld on the train. So therefore, a la, same person buys more games or somebody who doesn't have a PC but has a console buys the Steam Deck and then buys games off Steam. So you can see where they're doing it. That's the point of it. It's a route to market. So around 2021... Windows kind of pushed itself onto handheld PC gaming with the very first one that came out, the Win 3, I think it was called, and that kind of pushed Valve into thinking they need to react. The Steam Deck itself shows that, that can, it can be more performant to run games using Proton that are Windows-based, a DirectX-based, on their machine than it is on the Windows native platform. And that is the biggest slap in the face that I think Microsoft could ever get. But let's be honest, it's not a surprise. It's always been the case. And Windows continues to get worse. So as a huge, gigantic number of Windows users do just this they only buy it for gaming so there's a huge market for windows here in terms of just people that have windows for gaming and nothing more and i use unix and linux in my day-to-day -day work and home life so um i know the realities of it and the benefits of it and the features it has but in reality windows is the only gaming platform on pc outside of the steam deck 
and recently Lenovo's Legion Go S in January, which has now awoken the sleeping giant and made Microsoft very, very aware, in my opinion, for them to see that this is a direct threat to their market in games, and even more so Windows. That is really the threat they're worried about because Windows is their route to market. Everything sits around Windows. If they lose Windows, they lose any leverage they've got in the market. They've lost Xbox, so if they lose Windows, they won't have any mechanism to get you to buy stuff from the store and play stuff on their platform. And fundamentally, to take all your data and use it all for their own nefarious purposes. Let's be honest, most companies do that. And I know first answer. Don't put, no one in the comments tell me that it's not happening. Trust me, I, I could tell you a lot of stuff I was allowed to. So Asus are as good a partner as any that have a kind of a new proposed Xbox Windows handout, allegedly. So this information is coming out, um, I think, later this year. And it's based on a reliable Microsoft informer. So Tom Warren over on The Verge, which I believe Ked came from, Jez Corden, um, an article on Windows Central. But long and short of it, these people are very heavily linked to Microsoft in terms of their, their info comes directly from there. So I don't disbelieve this information. Um, and it's already been kind of severely hinted back by um, Phil Spencer. And like I say, it makes sense. I said it years ago. So it's not as if it's new. This isn't new. Sega did it. So Sega have always done it, in fact. They did it with the Mega Drive upwards. Um, they had the Amstrad, did the Sega Mega CD, PC. So they've always done that, and it allows them to mitigate cost of production. So again, ROI. It brings more revenue in because you license the IP. Other people take all the risk making your manufacturers, and then it uh, potentially extends your market if you're selling things. So all of it kind of feeds back to itself. Strategic partners, like I say, this, this is a classic example. So what I believe is the plan is the same one that I talked about in 2015 and kind of going forward was that Microsoft to continue to attempt with the UWP apps. So the Windows Phone, the Windows Lite options, you know, in terms of the Surface and other areas a few years ago when they kind of consolidated all of their Xbox hardware and Surface hardware teams into one. So this meant at some point the operating system and the UI would need to be merged. With Xbox consoles long since running a lighter version of Windows via virtualization and abstraction anyway. So you can learn more on this way back when on my R consoles just week PCs back in 2015, that video, in fact, in late 2014. The aim here was always the same. It's not changed. There's nothing's changed from Microsoft's view. It's just people don't see it. But this is why I'm saying I'm not a Nostradamus. It's obvious. So their aim will be easy. They have been shipping Xbox and PC games for many years now with cross-buy via the Xbox app and store. So almost certainly this will be a front and center on the new device. This will be something that you can just move into and pick up, buy a game, play it. But you can do it now on PC, you can do it now on Xbox, so long as you use that app. And you can push it across multiple devices. And it will also have the advantage of running Steam, I believe, which I've said before. This will likely be a side Xbox box. So you'll be able to sideload Steam in addition to having the Xbox Marketplace. Hence, I feel this new device will drop with a new operating system that will update the Xbox consoles at the same time or, or close thereafter, which will kind of blur those lines even more between the console and PC space. Remember the slogan, this is an Xbox, meaning Steam is likely to be a sideload option on that. The new hardware will be able to run both Xbox and Steam because they can't ignore it. They've never been able to ignore Steam. It's too big. It is gaming on PC, in, in essence. And you can see the pain and choice between the Steam Deck and new handhelds. Because if you're going to buy another handheld, or you're going to buy a PC and you're on console now, so you're, say you're a PS5 player, so this, is, this will be a target. They'll, they'll, they would have done market research on this and said, look, PS5 players are buying, and they're buying the PS Portal to play, you know, somewhere else so they're playing in the cloud and they're like i said on that one in fact i said they'd update it they'll update it so that people are seeing that people are actually buying these now and playing games on the go so they see a market for it because people's lifestyles have changed people are living in smaller places they're traveling a lot they're on trains a lot they're on planes a lot so it gives them all these options as long as you've got wi-fi but this means that they can tap into that market and if they can do it without the risk of having to manufacture produce and ship all of these products and just literally create the operating system, the, the what they're good at, the software side, and palm it off to companies and allow them to create that and run it within their infrastructure, then you can have multiple specs, and this is what the future of Xbox is going to be, multiple specs of Xbox that will be very PC-like versions, that will have an easier UI, a little bit like Steam OS, big screen, and it will allow them to palm this off, and Asus is a good choice, so it's somebody that can get something out, and their path now will be to say, do you want a Steam Deck or do you want a brand new handheld from Asus that will likely be far, far more powerful than the Steam Deck 
And just by how much, though, we'll have to find out and just what the cost is. But it kind of makes sense. And I also think, and I've been on record saying this for a while, that the whole Xbox preservation team and such that was set up in last year, I think it was, is likely going to be focused on getting an emulator or even a static recompile, as we've seen in kind of Xbox 360 BC titles, more recently on the PC in that Xenox recompile, Xenos. And prior to that, the N64 Zelda and Mario recompilers. What this means is that handhelds at first could finally offer a way to play all the current Xbox BC catalogue, a small subset or maybe even more of them than what we've got now in an expansion to try and reinvigorate that on this new handheld using these methods, which means they can sell you stuff they already own on their marketplace. They can basically sell you your past, which is the perfect route to ROI. So I think that this is what they've been set up for. They've been set up to create this big USP for the handheld and then generally an Xbox stroke PC to be able to play classic currently locked to old console games such as Panzer Dragoon Ultra, Jet Set Radio and even more on the 360 such as like I think Blue Dragon and Fable 2 are exclusive to it and many many more. Having all these run on a Windows handheld and maybe later across all PCs under the Xbox app aka Game Pass and whatever else they want to sell you. This would be a viable use of resource and time and it would help drive more profit back into the coffers of Microsoft Xbox War Chest, which has been severely emptied from the Bethesda and Activision contract. As I said, would be the case, and as I said, would negatively impact it. It was pretty obvious from the time when I told everyone, don't cheer this on. This is the death of Xbox as you know it. Um, and here we are, the death of Xbox as we know it. But the death of Xbox means long live Xbox because we've now got all business aims aside, everyone is assuming that this is going to be kind of a, an AMD APU. So Microsoft don't have to go that way. That's the other thing we need to be aware of. The manufacturer of the hardware, it needs to be agnostic. And you're seeing very heavily links to Microsoft working with NVIDIA on the neural rendering technology that they've pushed out with the RTX 50 series. And I was there at the CES. I actually asked Jensen directly about the DirectX and Microsoft connection with that. And he said they're, they're a key partner. At the end of the day, there's no enemies in business. The this This whole platform warrior thing is good for marketing there's a great interview with peter moore the other week uh, i love peter moore i think he's a, a great guy because he's really down to earth and i loved him in the sega side and I loved him in the xbox side and he is absolutely spot on there's nothing wrong with platform wars it's what happened back in the the late 80s early 90s with nintendo and sega or specifically sega and it's always been the case it happened with, with even early in the 80s with specky and commodore 64 though that was most of the us in the in the playgrounds and outside at work but the reality is that there's nothing wrong with competition, but in business, competition is only good for an outside sale. It's not good internally. So it might be an AMD APU. It might be an NVIDIA solution. And they're you know, moving heavily into doing NPUs, APUs, and that level of, of work will be a big key factor for them with the stuff they've done on the Switch. And then here, but it means more predominantly, it could be both. That's the point I'm trying to make. They're not locked in. It could be a choice made by the manufacturer so the OEM can choose who they want to go with and the software will just run on it. It'll be fine. So this means that the Xbox could end up being quite powerful. And if they did have an Xbox come in with a solution that was with this, which is what they might mean by the most powerful Xbox ever, if they went NVIDIA and they went top end, then yeah, they could create a box that is more powerful than anything else on the market in terms of console space. Top end PC hardware. So... This is what I think is the starting point for this. I think this is the beginning of where their roots are, will be. And in the end, they'll stop making and they'll just license everything if it works out for them. Who knows? They don't know. No one knows. This is the plan. So business aims aside, it might be AMD APU, kind of RDNA 4-based GPU, Ryzen 9000 um, with an MPU. It might be NVIDIA. But fundamentally, we'll get the first fruits of FSR on this or DLSS on this if you know if it was NVIDIA and possibly even the first signs of DirectX latest updates, like I just mentioned, that neural rendering stuff. So Microsoft have their own um, machine learning upscalers in, in the plan as well. So again, this means that they could incorporate that all into the APIs and the SDKs and DirectX and then leverage this within a unique selling point for the actual device itself or all Xbox devices that use their version of PSSR, whatever it might be called, uh, XSSR or something, I don't know. Uh, you can go mad with acronyms, people do nowadays. They even reuse old ones, which confuses the hell out of me as an older tech guy, so happens all the time. Um, but more importantly, they get great marketing points to sell the device and drive that gaming uptake on new technology. So 
I assume both Nvidia and AMD will be supported fully from the Xbox hardware platform. Like I say, an Asus will be the starting point for that, whichever one they choose. Likelihood is AMD, I'm not going to lie. That is the most likely one that they'll pick, but it doesn't mean it has to be. And I assume it will come or sell with an easy USB-C docked HDMI. So you'll be able to have like a power pad, mouse, keyboard, uh, run it in mobile, run it on desktop, or even console light by in your sitting room with a very simple, easy to use Xbox UI that makes it a, a nice alternative. Although... It's likely going to be a very, 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 very small impact against the impending Switch 2, which will definitely dominate the market. It's not Microsoft's problem. They're just expanding their market. They're just getting more routes into their Xbox API and into specifically into their Xbox marketplace. So that's the point. That's what I think will happen. I totally believe this story, and I think we'll see it very, very soon. At Xbox, our passion is to help you find and play the games that you love through creation, curation, and discovery. The ultimate expression of that passion is Xbox Game Pass. 